Sunday Mass for the congregation at Moidona, 12 miles west of Ballina in County Mayo. Like similar small farming communities throughout the country, the preoccupation here is with events in Brussels. The now suspended GAT talks, CAP reform, decisions which ultimately may have profound effects on all in the parish. This is our native place. And we ask God's protection here today at this Mass. Because immigration, unemployment, and possibly EC policies sometimes demand and create a situation where the best of our youth, unwillingly and sometimes unwittingly, are transplanted to Dublin, Cork, or Galway, to Leeds, London or Luton, to New York, Boston or Chicago. And it's a shame and a pity. There are 140 families in Moycombe, 550 people. But a glance at the parish records tell a tale of a birth rate that has dropped to just four a year in the last six years. Only one newly married couple a year staying in the parish. A society comprising of the very young at one extreme the elderly and middle-aged at the other. Well, that, quite frankly, to me, is a picture you're painting of a community that's dying. Right. I would agree wholeheartedly. I think that our policies, you know, the po world policies, European policies, national policies, are geared towards the el elimination of parishes like Maigona. I think they are, quite frankly, because, like, it's totally dependent on farming as an income. We have no uh, employment in the parish, there's no industry. The only employment we have is two or three teachers. Other than that, we have no employment. People have to go out of the parish, and the young people are choosing to go abroad. A visit to Moigana's National School provides even further evidence of the community's decline. Well, in 1948, uh, there were 112 children on the roll here. And uh, it gradually decreased then over the years. And by 1967, that number had dropped to 43. Then the number began to go up gradually again in the 70s, I suppose. And uh, in 19... Uh, 82 or 83, we had 106 here. Now the numbers are on their way down again, and we are now down to, down to 66. The evening school bus arrives at the Heffron farm, just outside the village. The three oldest of the seven Heffron children safely home from the secondary school in Crossmaline. Billy and Mary Heffron farm 80 acres, here, primarily in milk production. But already a 21p drop from last year's milk price will mean that the Hefferins will be worse off by about £5,000 this coming year. Mary, a teacher in the local primary school, is currently on a career break. She'd like to devote herself full-time to her growing family, but if things don't improve, she'll soon have to return to work. This is a testing year for us. If we can manage this year, I probably will be able to manage any year if we have all these cuts that they're saying, you know? But uh, it worries me. I, I would like to be at home. I like being at home. I don't mind at all. And um, I would just be worried that um, I mightn't be able to stay. And I might have to go back to supplement the income. And, um, you know, I wouldn't be here for them here then. But if that has to be. But it doesn't unduly worry me, I'll tell you the truth. I think, I, I'm optimistic about the future. I, you know, I know a lot about Gat and everything, because Billy knows a great deal about it. And, he tries to tell me a lot more than I actually understand. But um, I, I, I'm very optimistic still. By the standards of North County Mayo, Billy Heffron is a big farm. 80 acres, 30 cows and a milk quota of 29,000 gallons. Heffron's prosperity linked totally to EC policy. As far as he's concerned, the McSharry proposal for a 30% reduction in supports already taking effect. But what would be the consequences for the Heffrons if the American demand for a 75% reduction happened? 
That should spell disaster for me. Uh, you know, I certainly, if a 75% uh, cut was in, I wouldn't be here. Uh, it's as simple as that. I couldn't produce milk at 50 pence a gallon. But it does appear that there is a, a desire, a commitment to phase out absolutely supports. Where will agriculture for people like Billy Heffernan be in, when that happens? Uh, I think the whole lot is a socio-economic thing in the sense that I firmly believe that I will have to be kept here because if I have to move to Dublin or Galway, uh, it's going to cost twice as much to bring me there as to keep me here. And I believe in what Ray McSharry is saying. He's saying to us that in fact that he will redirect monies that are saved under cap, direct them back here to keep people in rural Ireland. And I, 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 I'm confident that will have to happen. Is the bottom line basically that the, the EC will have to pay farmers in places like Moygarn and the west of Ireland to stay on the land? Well, they're already doing it in the sense that we, you know, in the headage payments and in the premium payments. And I think that the Treaty of Rome, you know, going back a long time ago into the 60s, signalled that. And it's unfortunate that in the meantime that things have gone wrong. That, the, the, you know, the people who drew up this great dream of a united Europe believed in keeping me and the rest of my neighbours around here. But it went astray on the way. And we are not getting the money we're entitled to. This is the reality, and that is why the great gap is between East and West. OK, how much? How much do you think Europe should pay to keep people like yourself on the land? Well, I, I, I wouldn't consider, in, in, in an outfit like this, I wouldn't consider £5,000 and been out of the way. I think it would be a very cheap price to pay for to keep me here. And already, in many cases, in Moigana, the EC is doing precisely just that. By no stretch of the imagination could Tommy McGowan survive off his 35 acres of poor land, 30 head of dry stock and some sheep. He gets three months' work every summer from board in the morning, £600 in headage payments and about £6,000 from the sale of about 12 cattle a year. Overall a frugal income, the lion's share coming from Brussels. Tommy McGowan, a classic example of the type of small farmer many economists would prefer to see out of production. Well, what would you say if they were to say to you, as, as uh, some people would suggest, that you would be better off packing off and, and maybe going to work in, in a factory in England or somewhere else? Well, I suppose eventually I'll have to do that, yeah. If there doesn't uh, be something done about it, like if, this, if there isn't something done about it on the cattle prices and the 30% cuts now is coming in, it's awful much easier in this part of the country. In every part, like McGowan, in every part of the country in the West, it's, we cannot make ends meet at all. When to, the mark last year was a base, and we're down two hundred pounds to see on the same base. Eh? We cannot understand that. And what about the guy in Brussels? What about the the economist that says Tommy McGowan? Ah, well, I think it shouldn't be an operation. He, he he's not efficient. He's not profitable. We're, well, we're supporting him. Well, I think he should be looked at as a farmer too. In all existence, like with the with the with the, with the, with the other farmers, like he should be, he should be counted any. How long do you think? Why why should the EC taxpayer though still continue to support people like yourself? Ah, well, roughly, I'd say around he should he should have the same estimation for the small men as the, as the, as the big men in particular. Like I can't understand like that at all. How the big man has is fair out with all these things, and the small man is cut. He is not in the wrong at all. They need to shove him out, like. But even though the small farmer in the West hasn't benefited to the same extent as the big rancher, the fruits of EC membership have wrought improvements to life in Moigarn. Fifteen years ago, a tiny grocery shop stood here at the crossing. Today, there's a thriving supermarket and pub, and extensive grain stores servicing the local farming community. The Subodachi sends any rate? Or any rate? Right. There's even a weekly karate class in the local community centre, built by the Magana people for a quarter of a million pounds. And, at the weekend, in the local pub, a more traditional form of recreation. A card game of 25s. And it's at the weekend that the community takes on a false appearance, with the return of many of the young people working away, creating the impression of life and vibrancy in a society where, as one local put it to me, children here are bred for export. Rita Holmes has raised 12 children on just 50 acres of land. All have excelled academically. 
only three at home still, at secondary school. Her fierce pride and dignity flow obviously from her own family experience. So what do you do? Just tell, just ship them all out into the cities? Is that, that, that isn't the solution. Because there are already too many in the, in the towns, in the cities. And I think if they brought, in, if they set up industry in those towns in the west of Ireland, where the people could live on the land and supplement their income by the earnings from, okay. the, from their o work, okay, really? that would be the ideal solution. Do you think that Brussels should pay people like yourself to, to stay on the land? Not, not paid. I mean, no, well, the small farmers, all, that is a help. But um, to if they had work to, uh, I mean, nobody wants to be paid for doing nothing. We don't want, nobody wants to be paid for it. To, 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 they, they want to, uh, to have something to work. There is a question uh, of dignity. Yes, yes. This is a community that's uh, so vibrant. This community, you know, is jumping, you know. And if it was given a slight little callus at all, it would, it would take off. This is the thing that, you know, that I am delighted and part and part to be part of. And just an example, Nick, I played football for many years, you know, and only on two occasions I put the home jersey on, the Moigona jersey on. And, you know, I cried times when I couldn't do that. The pride I have in this parish. And when, you know, I go to a football match on Sunday and see, you know, the green and white out there, you know, and the, the, the people that turn up, they have real pride in their parish. And they, they've put great effort into, into improving it. And by God, they aren't going to let it die easily, you know. It's almost become a cliché to talk of the rural football teams with difficulty fielding a full side because of the ravages of immigration. The Morgana team, no exception. Only four of the present squad still actually live in the parish. In 86, we happened to win the, the junior title here. And a month after, two of our lads, they were only 19 years, left us, uh, Kevin O'Hara and Jared Cairn. And since that, you know, every year we lose two and three players. It would be easier for us to field the team beyond in London during the summer months than it would be here at home, you know. And, of course, even this team that's out here today, only four of them live in the parish during the week. They're, they're all home for the weekend, aren't they? All home for the weekend. Most of them come back for the weekend from Limerick and Galway and Dublin, you know, they're from different places round about. But we have only four of them staying at home at the present time. Is there a future for young people in agriculture in a place like... Like it's, very, it's very discouraging for young lads at the present time. But uh, I could see a future for the fairmen of, uh, if, if they had a job allowance. You know, any young fella that would be sitting up at the present time on the fairmen, if he could have a job, we'll say, until five o'clock in the evening, he may not be able to manage milk and things like that. But it's surprising what can be done. You know, and I've seen, you know, we have board pneumonia and Asahi and different uh, things round about. And we have fairmers at the present time that are working on the land and doing... Reasonably yeah, good well, job. Well, Parik Doherty is playing out there with you That's today. Right. He's got Park, a job Park after that. Is one of them. Well, is that the future, really, the kind of hobby farming that we're going to see here? It's looking like it. It's looking like it. That uh, there'll be very few, unless that you have over the hundred acres. At least this was a happy day for my girl. Beating neighbours and arch rivals, Kilfyan, comprehensively. Wrapping victory up with a last-minute penalty. <laughs> For the players, it was nice to be home for the match, but for most of them, Morgana holds no future. It's, it's obvious that more and more people are leaving the land, and that in a few years' time, it looks as if it's going to be all large farms that are going to be in Morgana. Like all the small farms are going to be slowly done away with. Is Morgana a dying community? I would say it is, and it's this alternative employment brought into the area to back up farming and for the young people to stay around Magana. But as it is, I would say it's dying. No, I wouldn't say it's dying. I'd say it's it's not as alive as it should be. It's because all the young people have, in a sense, left and only come back at weekends, then it's sort of half alive, half dead. In the, in the last few years now, I'd say, I, I just can't count the, the number of my friends that have immigrated from the parish. They've gone over to London. They've, they've, they've left the farming scene altogether. And in the future, I, I can see even more and more leaving. I'd like to live in my Ghana because that's where my roots are. But I won't, I, I just had fits up, I'm not going to be able to live here.
The size is uh, about 35 acres and we have a very mixed farm. We have some sheep and um, some dry stock and we're milking 10 cows. How important are common market EC supports? Very important because I think it's exactly what these small farms survive on. Without it, I think there's no profit. Unfortunately, because they're so small and things are so bad around here. Carmel Doherty and her husband, Porrick, are both realistic and lucky. Realistic because they make no pretense that the small farm here could support them, their two children, and indeed Porrick's parents who still live here. Lucky? Well, because Porrick is also employed in the laboratory in the nearby Asahi chemical plant. Uh, I think uh, it would be a matter that we wouldn't be on the farm if I didn't have a job. Um, I was probably lucky in the sense I got a job uh, very close to home and I was able to uh, develop and farm the 35 acres that my father has. But uh, if I hadn't that job, if I hadn't got it locally, more than likely I would be in either some other part of Ireland or some part of England and the farm would probably be rented or uh, sold at this stage. If, if you were hoping to live on 35 acres uh, with no outside job, um, and especially with the proposals as they are at the moment, uh, I, it, it would be ridiculous. Should people be paid, essentially, to stay on the land then by Brussels? Well, it looks as if uh, that is the only way that farms of this size, and even some farms bigger than this, uh, are going to survive. Um, they will literally have to pay people to stay on the land. And the likes of uh, Brussels will have to decide whether they would prefer this type of holding to disappear altogether, or they would prefer to remain, have it remain within a family uh, circle. This is part of our country, and this is part of the Irish economy. These, all these little farms are part of the Irish economy. And when you consider taking making these farms redundant. Not only are you considered making the farms redundant, but you're also co considered making the whole country redundant. The latest news from Brussels that Ray McSharry intends to divert a much greater share of the community's agricultural funds to the small farmer will be welcome in Moigana. But Moigana has had promises before. If all the voices were raised, I'm sure it would probably have some effect. If everybody uh, kicked up a row over it. We have been threatened, you know, for, it's not today, yesterday this happened, that it, the threat was here in the west of Ireland. We've been threatened for a very long time. And, uh, you know, we have been uh, you know, neglected by the various agencies, let them be politicians, uh, let them be co-ops, or let them be farm organisations. They had no great interest in it. Well, of course, the talks are rather frightening. Sometimes, uh, sometimes they can be very frightening, really, for particularly for people who are wholly dependent on farming. The bleakest picture that I can see would be a slow death, almost like cancer, that we're told there's no future for us. It might take 10, 20, 30 years, but a slow death for the community. I'm very optimistic still. I'm not depressed about the future. Your trust is in Ray McSharry. <laughs> in God and Ray McSharry.